Hey, good morning. It's Tuesday morning. I'm thankful that you've chosen to be with us today for our online uh, devotions and reflections. Thanks for watching this. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the way I'm doing it now where I'm trying to share this video along with the written component uh, for everyone to kind of see it all in one place. You know, for, for months I tried to do different things and I tried to figure out how to give you one last email or text each day to kind of loosen, uh, lessen the amount of um, stuff you were getting from me. So I hope this is working out for you uh, and making your uh, devotional life a little bit more simple in this season. Uh, our um, text today, we're, this week we're, we're studying together uh, John chapter 13, um, the new commandment that Jesus gives us in this session, uh, season rather, as we uh, get close to our, uh, our season of, uh, of, uh, and, uh, of love this week in Advent, talking about what it means to love, um, where Jesus tells us this in his new commandment. He says, when he had gone out, Jesus said, he being Judas, by the way, when he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of Man has been glorified and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him, him in himself. He will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little while longer. You will look for me. As I said to the Jews, so I now say to you, where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should also love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Today we're going to talk talking about the world behind the text, what's happening behind the scenes here in this passage. And then we'll, uh, tomorrow we'll look at the world of the text. Um, Wednesday we'll talk about what it means for us today. And then Friday we'll talk about some ways we can be um, good disciples. But um, th this story here uh, that we're reading falls in the midst of Holy Week and falls in the midst of um, Jesus getting ready to go uh, to the cross. Um, John has a lot of teaching towards the end of Jesus' life. Um, and chapter 13 um, is, is a key is a key chapter because it starts off with um, Jesus saying, Jesus giving the story, uh, you've seen the story where Jesus um, washed the feet of the disciples. They're getting ready to celebrate the Passover, the Passover meal. Um, and Jesus uh, brings the disciples together and they are, he washes their feet. And so in that context, um, G Peter says to Jesus, um, we're in verse 8 of chapter 13, um, Peter says, you will never wash my feet. And Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no share with me. So Peter said to him, Lord, not only my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but it's entirely clean. And you who are clean, though not all of you. Um, so the Jew, they, they have now come to partake in the, uh, the, the, the Passover meal, the Seder. And part of the ritualistic life together with the Jewish people is that they would have bathed in a ritual since a mikvah bath is what this is talking about here. Before they'd eaten, they would have had a ritual hand washing and feet and washing of themselves. Jesus is washing their feet, and that would have ritually cleaned them. Jesus is washing their feet because they wore sandals and their feet were dirty, and that was the act of a servant. Jesus is not just, he, his, 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 what he's doing here is not just the act of cleaning them, but he's modeling for them what the path that he was walking was going to look like. And it was going to be a path of service, not a path of power, but a path of service. And so Peter said, and Jesus says, Peter says, well, you're not going to wash my feet. Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you have no part of me. In other words, if you are not willing to serve, then you really can't be part of me. Then Peter says, well, then all of me. Peter, Jesus said, no, you're missing it. You've already been bathed. You've already had a bath. Pay attention to what I'm doing. This is not ritually cleansing you like the mikvah bath. This is not actually for your physical cleansing. This is to model what my path looks like moving forward. It's a path of service. Jesus is telling Peter and the other disciples, no, my path is a path of service. So he washes their feet. Then he says, well, one of you is going to betray me. Then Judas leaves, and Jesus tells them, this is my new command that we're going to focus on later this week, that you love one another. Then Peter says, well, I'm not going to betray you. And he says, yeah, by the time the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. 
Then we move into chapter 14, which is um, the great passage we've read so many times at funerals. My father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? Verse chapter 15 is how he is the vine. Chapter 16 is about the, 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 the work of the Spirit. And chapter 17 is his great prayer for the disciples and for you and for me. So this teaching here about love falls right in the center of this last night together. And of all the things he teaches about, it's, the language he use, uses here is the most direct. I'm giving you a new commandment. This is what I'm telling you to do. And so he's getting ready to go to the cross. This will be his, his last time together, together with the disciples. So of all the things that he, he could tell them to do, he tells them to love. And we're going to talk tomorrow specifically what this means in this context, what it means to talk about love, uh, what, he, what he's teaching and telling us here. But this new commandment here falls smack dab in the middle of his last time together with the disciples. And in many ways, this story of this new commandment is the hinge upon which the story turns. Because before we have the preparation, after we have what is to come, but in many ways, this teaching here, this new commandment here, is the hinge of the totality of the rest of John's gospel. That is how central it is to this gospel account. So frankly, that's how central it should be to me and to you and to the living of our life together. This new commandment I'll leave to you, for you to love one another. That's his command for us, and that is our command as disciples is for us to love one another as Christ has loved us. So I pray today as we live our lives that we can live our life in a way that honors this and passage, that honors this command, that honors this mission that Jesus has for us today is that we live out this mission of love. So tomorrow we'll look more specifically at what's happening here in the text and what this means to us. And then we'll look about what it means for, the, for, our, for our life in the days to come for our discipleship. So I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, Tuesday today. It's always good to be with you in, in our morning Bible studies together. It's, it's a lot of fun. I, I enjoy our time together. So thanks for, thanks for joining with us today for our online study. Hope you have a, have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Love you guys. Thanks for watching.